Hello YouTube. Uh, I tried to make this uh, video before in two parts, but for some reason, I don't know if it was the length, but it would not upload to YouTube. So I'm going to go ahead and redo this again in three parts. Um, this information is found in a November 28th article from Before It's News entitled 30 Signs That the United States of America is Being Turned Into a Giant Prison. It goes right along with the video I made this morning, which I entitled Preparation for the Implementation of Martial Law. What I'm going to do is go ahead and read the 30 signs that the article listed. Uh, I found this to be very interesting. So the following are 30 signs that the United States of America is being turned into a giant prison. Number one, and, and this is the one that I spoke of this morning. A new bill that is going through the U.S. Senate would allow the U.S. military to arrest American citizens and hold them indefinitely without trial. This new law was recently discussed in an article posted on the website of The New American. In what may be a tale too bizarre to be believed by millions of Americans, the U.S. Senate appears ready to pass a bill that will designate the entire Earth, including the United States and its territories, one all-encompassing battlefield in the global war on terror, and authorize the detention of Americans suspected of terrorist ties indefinitely and without trial or even charges being filed that would necessitate a trial. U.S. Senator Lindsey Graham is a big supporter of the bill, and he says that it would basically say in law for the first time that the homeland is part of the battlefield. According to the PPJ Gazette, the following are three things that this new law would do. One, explicitly authorize the federal government to indefinitely imprison without charge or trial American citizens and others picked up inside and outside of the United States. Two, mandate military detention of some civilians who would otherwise be outside of military control, including civilians picked up within the United States itself. And three, transfer to the Department of Defense core prosecu prosecutorial investigative law enforcement penal and custodial authority and responsibility now held by the Department of Justice. Uh, number two of 30, U.S. Senator Joe Lieberman is asking Google to install a terrorist button on all blogger.com blogs so that readers can easily flag terrorist content for authorities. Number three, most Americans have no idea how sophisticated the Big Brother prison grid has become. For example, in Washington, D.C., the movements of every single car are tracked using automated license plate readers. The following comes from a recent Washington Post article. More than 250 cameras in the district and its suburbs scan license plates in real time, helping police pinpoint stolen cars and fleeing killers but the program quietly has expanded beyond what anyone had imagined even a few years ago. With virtually no public debate, police agencies have begun storing the information from the cameras, building databases that document the travels of millions of vehicles. Nowhere is that more prevalent than in the district, which has more than one plate reader per square mile, the highest concentration in the nation. Police in the Washington suburbs, suburbs have dozens of them as well, and local agencies plan to add many more in coming months, creating a comprehensive dragnet that will include all the approaches into the district. Number four, in some American schools, RFID chips are now being used to monitor the attendance and movements of children while they are at school. The following is how one article recently described a program that has just been instituted at a preschool in California. Upon arriving in the morning, according to the Associated Press, each student at the CCC George Miller Preschool will don a jersey with a stitched-in RFID chip. As the kids go about the business of learning, 
Sensors in the school will record their movements, collecting attendance for both classes and meals. Officials from the school have claimed they're only recording information they required to provide while receiving federal funds for their Head Start program. Uh, yeah, right. Number five, increasingly, incidents of misbehavior at many U.S. schools are being treated as very serious crimes. For example, when a little girl kissed a little boy at one Florida elementary school recently, it was considered to be a possible sex crime and the police were called out. Oh my, our tax dollars at work. I like to see that. Uh, number six, but what happened to one very young student in Stockton, California earlier this year was even worse. Earlier this year, a Stockton student was handcuffed with zip ties on his hands and feet, forced to go to the hospital for a psychiatric evaluation, and was charged with battery on a police officer. That student was five years old. Mm, wow. Number seven. In the United States today, police are trained to respond to even the smallest crimes with extreme physical force. For example, one grandfather in Arizona was recently filmed laying unconscious in a pool of his own blood after police rammed his head into the flood inside a Walmart on Black Friday night. It was thought that he was shoplifting, but it turns out that he says... He was just trying to tuck a video game away so other crazed shoppers would not grab it out of his hands. Number eight. Did you know that the government actually sets up fake cell phone towers that can intercept your cell phone calls? The following is how a recent Wired article described these stingrays. You make a call on your cell phone thinking the only thing standing between you and the recipient of your call is your carrier's cell phone tower. In fact, that tower your phone is connecting to just might be a booby trap set up by law enforcement to snare your phone signals and maybe even the content of your calls. So-called stingrays are one of the new high-tech tools that authorities are using to track and identify you. The devices, about the size of a suitcase, spoof a legitimate cell phone tower in order to trick nearby cell phones and other wireless communication devices into connecting to the tower as they would to a real cell tower. The government maintains that the stingrays don't violate Fourth Amendment rights since Americans don't have a legitimate expectation of privacy for data sent from their mobile phones and other wireless devices to a cell tower. What they probably mean is the government maintains that the stingrays don't violate Fourth Amendment rights since Americans no longer have any rights. Number nine, U.S. border agents are allowed by law to search any laptop being brought into the United States without even needing any reason to do so. Number 10, in the United States of America, everyone is a potential th terrorist. According to FBI Director Robert Mueller, homegrown terrorists represents as big a threat to American national security as Al-Qaeda does. Wow. I'm really glad that I know that. You know, the homegrown terrorists is just, wow. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and stop this here, and I will pick up with number 11 in the next video.